Hey guys, this is Casper with the Tape, and today you join me for episode 4 of Collaborative Warfare, and after our, the events of last turn in which I took back Edda's side and struck back against the uh, Kerbal's Democratic Republic of Clathu, or whomever, um, taking Woollypool, uh, and saying that I didn't think uh, Twitchy would be able to respond because I didn't think he had any long-range aircraft, he uh, took that as a challenge, developed long-range aircraft, and came back, and took Woollypool, and instead of going on to Edda's side, he went and did something else. And during his flight to one of Space Game Junkie's uh, sites, he uh, requested of me that we have a four-turn truce, um, well, a, f a ceasefire, so that we can do other things during this f f um, these four turns, which I think means he wants to get lots of Space Game Junkie's land, and I kind of want to get it too. So I need to accept this. However, I don't have a communication satellite, so we need to launch one right now. So yes, that's what we're doing here. We're launching our comm satellite, and this is obviously sped up because it's a ra rather um, laborious launch. Uh, and we're going from the old KSC or KSC two, um, which is looks much better now with curb inside all the new runways. It looks like quite a substantial base of operations, which probably it will become. Hopefully, my uh, main base of operations in the south, away from the Arctic, where we like to be because we are the territorial Arctic protection entente. So yeah, let's uh, just. Go all the way to orbit and turn over nowhere near enough because I'm still not, haven't done that much in the new aerodynamics because I haven't been playing a ton of rocketry in KSB for some reason. Um, so yeah, and if I let let it go here without the main stage, um, it would probably hit Twitchy's land. However, the whole point of this is to make peace with Twitchy at least for a little while. So maybe nuking him with a satellite probably wouldn't be the best move, although it would be really tempting and a really, really great move just to... Uh, kill him with the piece of technology that is going to save him from the territorial territorial arctic protection on top. Obviously he's uh, doing this because he's scared and knows that uh, I'm far more powerful than him, even if his words said that uh, pretty much the opposite. Um, but yeah, basically there's a lot of stuff we want to do, and this early in the game maybe it's best to not just have an all-out slugfest over the um, uh, bases. Uh, a lot of people seem to say that um, that it, it won't really work because surely we'll just keep trading bases. Well, the point is that if we develop like good enough defenses, it'll stop the other person taking back the base, and I've actually been working on that by modifying a few things um, so that I'll be able to hold a base when I take it because otherwise it's just trading bases. So eventually someone will just have an impenetrable fortress and we'll need like a giant air force to take it down, and that'll be awesome. But anyway, we've put our... Um, We've changed the inclination of my satellite because I'm not actually on the equator at the KSC. Um, so yeah, now it's uh, nicely... Oh, and we can just clear up debris with the guns. I have put guns on this just in case someone decides to steal it or blow it up. Um, although we are in talks about um, taking away the ability to have uh, a war above 70 kilometers. So maybe that's the best thing. So yeah, um, that's that nicely done. I need to set it to guard mode since we still don't have the rule about not taking things, um, and I don't trust anyone. Um, and yeah, and now we can accept our uh, accept our. Well, once I've deployed that antenna, I guess, and after that massively long quick save because the quick saves, the, well, the save files are now like 11 megabytes, which is pretty ridiculous for a KSP quick save. It's because we have 150 craft lying about and a ton of debris from when I always own Twitchy, obviously. Uh, although, actually, I haven't done that much attacking compared to everybody else. And this turn, luckily, I don't really need to, um, because no one's, no one's like, attacking me anymore, because they're all so scared of the freaking territorial Arctic protection on Tom, because we're so beastly and awesome. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, this will lead to pro a, a prosperous four turns of probably stealing Bellux's bases, because we're evil. And if everyone else is doing that, I'm not going to lose the land. But anyway, Edda's side is still unprotected. So we're going to put out a new uh, protection thing, and well, a new turret, and it does have um, some rockets on it, and you're like, what the hell, unless you saw the one where I did this exact same thing before with a slightly different turret. Then you'll know that I'm just moving off the helicopter, because these don't go down steps that well. And I tried to invent something that went down the steps, but that was really, really hard. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to fly this over there, and deploy some parachutes, and land very perfectly, obviously, um, and very laterally, but luckily these wheels are pretty much just cheats, so I won't fall over. Um, and then we can decouple these uh, engines, since we no longer need them. Maybe slam on the brakes, maybe that would be smart. But yeah, this is, well, pretty much the same thing I've deployed everywhere else, except it's got um, Sidewinder missiles as well, because they're quite good. Um, which I think I deployed in Woolly Pool, which didn't appear to be super effective, because I got bombed and 
blown up and things by Twitchy and his new aircraft. So I, uh, my solution to that is to turn the scan interval down on the weapon manager so it'll fire even more missiles because missiles seem to be super ineffective right now. But now it's on scan, scan interval 1, so it'll just deploy all of them, which is fine because I can reload them if it survives, which it will because obviously it, it, missiles are just going to kill everything. So... That's good, and another ridiculously long quick save, and it's time to move on to more kind of theoretical testing type things. So, this is my helicopter I've been developing. Uh, it came to my attention that someone else is developing helicopters with about a 40 kilometer range. So I went ahead and developed one with a 100 kilometer range, just cause. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we, Fire Spitter adds a bunch of really nice um, helicopter parts that make helicopters super easy. So, uh, this is mine. Um, I've added... The main fuel tank is just like a normal jet fuel fuselage because it carries like 400 units of fuel, which is loads. And I have tested this out. I think it does have about 100 kilometer range, maybe a little less. And if it's doing any combat, probably more like 90 kilometers. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. It's got a ton of weaponry. It has uh, four Hellfire missiles, which is pretty good. Um, they can do lots of death and destruction, although two of them seem to be reasonably glitched right now. Not entirely sure what that's about. Um, but yeah, and then it also has a bunch of rocket pods which we can just fire off. And there's a lot of rockets in these pods. These are actually the lighter ones, so they're slightly less effective. But if anything survives this amount of rockets, then it doesn't even deserve to die. So <laughs> that's my thinking. Um, so yeah, that's all my rockets away. And obviously a Vulcan turret, because uh, sometimes you've got to spray stuff. And I didn't want to bring a little bit of turret like I put on my planes. Um, and there we go, deploy these other missiles, because I want to... Just kind of see him go. And it does actually top out, even with weapons at about, um, like, 70 meters a second. Uh, so that's about 175 miles an hour-ish, um, that sort of thing. So that's actually pretty good. Um, and the main thing about a helicopter is it's very easy to land places um, and deploy places uh, like boats, which could be good. Annoyingly, the AI flight computer doesn't really work very well with helicopters, which is a shame. I was planning on protecting my boats with them. Not that I have any boats right now, because they can't be protected by helicopters, obviously. Um, and I'm not sure how well it works with VTOLs, but uh, I guess we'll just kind of see. Um, anyway, skipping ahead, this is me trying to land it on the VAB, since um, things on the VAB need to be destroyed. Since uh, Well, not now, because I'm at peace with Twitchy for a little while, since Twitchy has his Spartans on the... Uh, on the top of the VAB. Seriously, if you haven't seen his first episode, just watch it, because he has, like, a literal Spartan turret. It's, like, um, the 300 scene with, like, Leonidas in the middle, and then a bunch of guys around him with, like, heat shields as shields and guns as swords. It's awesome. So, you know, I can't wait to murder it with an air fleet. I reckon it will require an air fleet, and even if it doesn't, it deserves one. So, yeah, anyway, I overshoot a little bit here, because I'm not a very good helicopter pilot yet. But I will be, unless I don't bother using these helicopters. This is just kind of a test of a bunch of new stuff. Um, I don't know if these are even going to be super effective, but I imagine they're quite easily deployable. But then so are my VTOLs, so it's kind of weighing up there whether it's useful or not. Um, but yeah, it looks like I might be able to put this down. Um, and these can be much easier to land than VTOLs, so... Yeah, um, although putting this down was not super great. Although, there we go, it's landed, so that's perfect, if a little bit had probably broken everybody's necks inside the cockpit. And the next piece of technology I want to show you is this drone. Um, this sort of stuff's usually in like an extra video where I'm like, look at all this extra stuff I did. But this was a shorter episode because I was just doing a couple things. Um, and I might do another extra video of actually doing interesting things with this. But yeah, this is my drone. It's mainly for reconnaissance. But it does carry two um, uh, freaking Maverick missiles, which are uh, insane uh, air-to-ground missiles, which will destroy most things. Um, much, just much better than Hellfires, basically. So yeah, it's mainly for just long-range um, reconnaissance and stuff, but if it needs to uh, deal death, it can, because, well, I don't build things that don't deal death. Or something to that effect. Uh, it's got pretty big, pretty big wings, uh, so it glides really well. Um, it's pretty basic design. You just use all the, uh, all the parts that were put in the new version of, uh, not the new version of KSP, it was like put in ages ago, but you know, the, the you know, the, well, you can see the parts I'm talking about. These parts just make really good drone things. And there's that good drone core. Um, drone core, seriously. Sorriously? I was trying to say sorry for <laughs> missing that word, and then it said seriously. So that's good. Um, it appears I can't talk anymore, so that's that's good. 
Uh, yeah, you can see the drone corps in the middle, near the wings, if you can't tell. Anyway, let's fire away a missile and try and destroy this helicopter. It's in a bit of an annoying position, so it might not fully destroy it if it doesn't hit the helicopter. But still, hopefully it will do some damage. Um, it's really just seabing. It looks like it's totally missing, but um, you can't really see distances at this point. So yeah, we. it looks like it is actually on course. Um, and is it about to... Oh, now it's... Well, it looks like it's going to hit. And yeah, it looks like it hit. Although the helicopter isn't dead, so that's good because it's my guy. Um, oh, it looks like it must have hit near it. But it did do some damage, even though it didn't actually directly hit it. Although, to a helicopter, it should really be able to destroy them. So... I'm going to fire on the other missile with a weird maneuver, which was actually my landing maneuver. Then I decided to fire, them, decided to fire the other missile because I'm evil um, and wanted to see my helicopter die. But it's fine. I don't do a very good job of landing the drone. So everybody dies. So that's fine because that's called yin and yang, where everybody dies pretty much. I'm pretty sure I read that right. Not that I know what book that would be in. I don't know, one of those weird ones. Anyway, it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like we destroyed it at that time a pretty direct hit and now it's just bits of nothing so that's good brilliant anyway let's try and land this although I am coming in way too fast and about the middle of the runway so I'm probably just gonna glide right on over the runway because I don't want to land really stupidly um, but don't worry I do land stupidly so yeah we'll just uh, kind of f fail at this I guess um, and then yeah. Oh, and you can also see it's got a little uh, landing skid behind the engine because the uh, engine's so far back. It's actually pretty useful to have that skid just in case I come down too hard. It'll stop the engine from smashing off. Um, so yeah, right now I decided this would be a good time to do a turn um, really slowly, really near the runway. So then I come down really hard and then just kind of flatline and then kind of try and fly and then think that's okay and throttle down. I don't know what my thinking here was. But uh, it didn't go great, and then I decided turning would be the best course of action right now. Um, so yeah, this was pretty much a shambles, and then we get a nice like 20 point landing on the wing, and then the other wing, and then more wings, and then fall over sideways, and the engine finally turns off when it breaks. So yeah, this has been Chaos People's Tape. I'll see you next time.